Hi, thanks so much for joining us for this edition of National Council Conversations, where we're going to explore um, one of the many issues that have been exacerbated during COVID and kind of outreach uh, and harm reduction. Joining me today for this conversation is Shannon Mace, who's a senior advisor here at the National Council for Mental Wellbeing, and Hillary Esslinger from Maine Access Points. Welcome to both of you. you. You know, as I reflect on the last 18 months or so, boy, it's been a ride, hasn't it? You know, I, I said to somebody recently, I'd much rather read about pandemics and history books than live through them and the disruption that all of us have faced. Uh, you know, I was talking to some reporters yesterday about the, the new data from CDC showing that over 93,000 people uh, have died of overdoses last year. And it was interesting that they want to say, like, what's the cause? And mm -hmm. I was kind of reflecting on the fact that there is no single cause. Is there, and there's probably no single intervention that we could do. There's many things that we're uh, going to have to do to try to address this. And Shannon, do you want to talk a little bit about one of the ways that we're trying to, that we're working with the CDC to try to do that? Sure. Thanks, Chuck. Just like you said, there's no single cause and there is no single one silver bullet on what's going to solve this issue. But what we do know is that there's a whole host of evidence-based strategies that do prevent overdose and help people who use drugs and people with substance use challenges. And one of those strategies is broadly known as harm reduction. So about a year ago, the National Council partnered with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, to come up with a project to actually award grants to 16 harm reduction organizations across the country to support implementation of innovative and adaptive strategies during the COVID-19 pandemic, knowing how disruptive the pandemic was on harm reduction organizations and folks who use drugs. And today I'm so excited, like you're, you said, uh, we're gonna talk with Hillary Esslinger, who's the executive director and co-founder of Maine Access Points, uh, representing one of the 16 organizations that uh, was awarded funding. And Maine Access Points, like the name um, entails, uh, provides statewide harm reduction services. So Hillary, I was, I was really struck by the way you describe your organization and kind of, you say that you're trying to create access points for overdose prevention and harm reduction uh, services in Maine. What does that look like? What are the kind of things that you do? Yeah, well, thanks so much for inviting me to be part of this conversation today. Um, yeah, so at MAP, we are, you know, we started off as an overdose education and naloxone distribution program. And then right in the spring of 2020, so right at the start of COVID, we became a certified syringe access program through the state. So we have three mobile syringe access programs. We have a program in York County, in Aroostook County, and in Washington County. And so you know, kind of looking at the state of Maine, York County is right on the New Hampshire border, Aroostook County is right on the Canadian border, and Washington County is as east as you can get and as north as you can get. So we're really spread out. Um, so we have the three uh, mobile syringe access programs there, and then we also have a statewide mail delivery program um, we have a statewide overdose education and naloxone distribution program that um, is really made up of a network of peer distributors across the state that train people in overdose education and distribute naloxone in their communities. We do aftercare and support for folks who have experienced their own overdose or who have responded to overdoses. And then we do a lot of like community education, working with other organizations um, to make sure that they have the harm reduction education that they need. So that's our great. services, oh, sorry. No, I was gonna say that, that sounds great. Um, yeah, thanks. So I'm wondering, you know, we see these numbers like 93,000 people have, have lost their lives to overdoses. What what have you seen, you know, during the pandemic in Maine? Like, uh, what, what are some of the things that you've uh, both seen and tried to respond to? Yeah, so we've had, um, 
you know, we've definitely experienced that increase in overdoses and overdose deaths in Maine. We're a really rural state. And so folks kind of find themselves isolated from a lot of the harm reduction services that historically had um, kind of been provided in Maine. And so COVID just really like exasperated that for everybody. Um, we, you know, in kind of like meeting that need, we, our focus is on um, rural communities in Maine, folks who have historically not had access. Um, and so it became really important for us to kind of address the isolation that was being experienced because of COVID. Um, and then kind of generally speaking, coming in, being in really rural parts of the state. So, you know, in addressing that, we really, we provided a lot of virtual services, which was not particularly new to us, but new in um, the volume of which we were doing it. We thought, you know, we have these like really beautiful peer run syringe access programs that operate in person, but then we really wanted to address um, mail delivery. And so what does it look like to provide services when it's all through the mail? And that was really virtual care. Um, mm. So virtual harm reduction drop in hours, we did weekly virtual overdose education and um, naloxone trainings, and just really got to know people over the phone. <laughs> yeah. um, and it and it worked really well. And we're going to continue to be able to operate that way. That's great. How innovative, right? I mean, I think all of us have had to reinvent ourselves in some way, our businesses dur during COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the main sources of funding for harm reduction now in Maine? And, and how did this grant uh, support that? Yeah, I mean, this, so we, because we are a certified syringe access program in Maine, um, we have funding through the state. We also access state um, funds for our overdose education and naloxone distribution program. But really, I mean, this funding was so meaningful to us because it just like very simply supported this participant-centered care and gave us the um, ability to try something new. <laughs> and it really, for us, it was this like, it provided kind of the financial infrastructure to support mail delivery, to support, you know, our mobile programs in Aroostook, York and Washington County, we did home deliveries. So no one had to congregate um, or come to a site. We just went to people. And so, you know, we, we were able to use this funding to really sustainably deliver those goals um, and those, and, and, in that, you know, folks who had never been connected to harm reduction services got access. Our mail delivery program, you know, has reached hundreds of people in Maine, and many of them had never had a sustainable supply of harm reduction um, tools. And so folks, you know, because they hadn't had access, were having to reuse a lot, were driving hours out of their way to access any sort of services. Um, and so I think that this funding also helped us show that this model works outside of a pandemic in just a rural state. Um, and, and that's meaningful because we have high rates of, um, you know, of, of bloodborne illness and soft tissue infections because people have not had access to um, ongoing harm reduction care. So this funding was, it's really hard to express kind of the meaning that it had for us. Um, yeah, it was wow. huge. Oh, that's so great to hear. And yeah. uh, I, I'm, I love the idea, like, uh, can we take some of the learnings that you've had through the pandemic and, you know, how do we help spread those, right? So, you know, um, that's, been, you know, not only have we had to innovate, but I think many of us have had the experience of, wow, there's actually different ways we could do things that, uh, that never occurred to us before. Uh, mm -hmm. That old adage of mother being the, or uh, Necessity being the mother of invention, uh, really, you know, kind of, uh, you see, it's not just an old wives' tale. It actually, actually <laughs> has some application. Um, so, listen, I, you know, I've been doing, I've been doing this kind of work for a long time, and I remember when the federal government, you couldn't even say the words harm reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so, so incredible to me that the American Rescue Plan includes a new harm reduction 
uh, line item for SAMHSA. And we know that the Center for Substance Abuse Prevention is working on how to implement that. This week, the House of Representatives includes money in their uh, proposed appropriation mm -hmm. bill that would actually give, provide federal funding for syringe exchange. Uh, what are you also mentioned as we were getting ready that some cool things that have happened in Maine recently? Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, for a really long time, we had really restrictive rules um, surrounding syringe access in Maine. So we were a one for one state. Um, during COVID and through an executive order signed by our governor, um, we were able to legally move from a one for one model of care to a needs based model of care, which we know is best practices for, um, for syringe access. We also were able to have a countywide and statewide reach for our programs. We were able to do um, mail delivery, which was something that had not been permitted um, historically. And, you know, recently, I think it was signed this last week, um, we, our state decriminalized, possess, decriminalized the possession of paraphernalia. Um, which is really meaningful and, um, you know, incredibly exciting. Folks across the state came together um, to fight for this policy change, and, and it's amazing that it's happened. Well, congratulations, Hillary. Thanks. So, Shannon, I know that, uh, you know, you're involved in passing out the grants to 16 organizations. What other ways are National Council supporting harm reduction organizations right now. And what do you see as the kind of things coming down the pike? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's been a great opportunity to work with organizations like Hillary and just like you said, um, learn from them, you know, having to have quickly adapted and innovated during the pandemic. So some of the other things that we've been doing in addition to the grants is we conducted a really robust environmental scan that included interviews with 21 harm reduction organizations across the country, detailing exactly those innovations. So a lot of folks quickly transitioned to virtual services, mail-based, um, capitalized on some of those policy changes to increase distribution to folks who need it most. And that environmental scan is on our webpage, um, so folks can check that out and learn about all of those strategies that are replicable and adaptable. Also, we're in the midst of creating uh, different technical assistance tools for the field. Right now, we're working on one related to telehealth and technology-assisted services for folks who use drugs, which we think will come out in a couple of months. We also are going to be hosting a national webinar at the end of August to look out for, where we're going to feature some of our grantees to actually have them talk about their experience in the field during the pandemic and the ways in which they've adapted and applied these funds. So we have a few things in the pipeline uh, coming out and we're just incredibly excited uh, to play a small role in supporting this really, really critical work and um, amazing organizations like MAP and amazing people like Hillary who are uh, really devoted and committed to helping folks. Well, so what a great opportunity uh, to be with you guys today. Thank you so much, Hillary, not just for being with us, but for the work that you are spearheading in Maine to save lives and Shannon for your national leadership to support harm reduction. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us for today's conversation and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any comments, questions, or ideas that you want to share with us. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.